Shalom. This week's Sedra is Sedra Shemini. In order for us to understand the great idea in Sedra Shemini, I thought it would be good to tell you a story about Natasha. Natasha, at this point, didn't know what to do. This wasn't the first time that she had spoken disrespectfully to her boss. Realizing that she had crossed yet another line, she quickly rushed out of the building for an early lunch and made her way down to the hotel. To calm herself, she took out a chumash and read this week's Sedra. Natasha read the Pusik in this week's Torah portion that said, And Moshe and Aaron went into the tent of meeting. Then they came out and blessed the people, and the glory of the Lord appeared to all the people. In his commentary to this Pusik about Moshe and Aaron entering into the temple into the tent of meeting, Rashi asked, Why did they enter the tent of meeting? And they answered, So that Moshe could teach Aaron about the procedure of the burning of the Ketoras, the incense. But yet Rashi offers another explanation. When Aaron saw that all the sacrifices had been offered, and all the procedures had been performed, and yet the Shekhinah, God hadn't manifested himself for, in front of the Jewish people, Aaron was pained, he was distressed. He said, I know that God is angry with me, and it's because of me on my account that Shekhinah has not descended for the Jewish people. So he said to Moshe, My brother Moshe, is this what you have done to me, that I have entered and been put to shame? But it was Moshe that told Aaron to go into the Mishkan. At once Moshe entered the tent of meeting with him, and they prayed for mercy. It was then that the Shekhinah came down for the Jewish people. But Aaron wasn't the only one who took the blame for the Shekhinah not resting among the Jewish people. The people blamed themselves as well. Rashi continued in his commentary, and he said, After the Shekhinah manifested itself, Moshe and Aaron came out and blessed the people. They said, May the, pleasantries, may the pleasantness of the Lord our God be upon us. May it be God's will that the Shekhinah rest in the work of your hands. Rashi asked, why did he choose this particular blessing? And he answered that because all, throughout all the seven days of the inauguration of the Mishkan, when Moshe erected the Mishkan and performed the service in it and then dismantled it daily, the Shekhinah did not rest on the Mishkan. The Jewish people were humiliated, and as Aaron had turned to Moshe and said it was his fault, so too they turned to Moshe and they said, Moshe, our teacher, all the efforts we have taken so that the Shekhinah should dwell amongst us, so we should know it will have been forgiven for the sin of the golden calf. And now they saw that since the Shekhinah hadn't rested, all their efforts had been known and they hadn't been forgiven. Therefore Moshe answered them, This is the thing that the Lord commanded, and do it, and the glory of the Lord will appear before you. My brother Aaron is more worthy and important than I, and so far as through his offerings and his service, the Shekhinah will dwell among you, and you will know that Hashem has chosen him. The Shekhinah did dwell amongst them. Taking responsibility is an important character trait, and unfortunately at times one of the hardest things to follow through on. When the consequences of error, sin, or crime hit, most people try to avoid responsibility. Excuses, justifications, and rationalizations run rampant, while taking responsibility isn't even considered an option. The lesson learned from this week's Sedra by Natasha sitting at the Kotel was the importance of taking responsibility for your actions, something she committed to do just as she was gathering her stuff and leaving the Kotel. Aaron and Benisra both took responsibility for their errors, and so should we. Shabbat Shalom.